Hello and welcome to an extra wild episode of the Rockwardness Podcast, the show where we interview an artist we love about why they first started playing music and why they stuck with it, and they play us one of the first songs they ever wrote. I'm one of your hosts, Rose Sean. This episode is wild because we're interviewing Kelsey Ayer, who you may know from Jaws of Love, but maybe also from Local Natives. Very exciting. But also because we're releasing it on a Thursday, not a Tuesday like normal, because his record comes out tomorrow, and this is podcasting, we're rebels, and we do what we want. This is where I would normally ask Tony how he knows our guest, but he's on tour, so you're just going to have to listen to the episode to hear the answer. Here's our conversation with Kelsey Ayer. I do feel like they're embarrassing enough to like feel like I'm I'm hopefully doing the <laughs> the rockward g- gaining some rockwardness. Yeah. Oh, yeah okay. Yeah, good. Yeah. So we're we're actually gonna set up an embarrassometer. Okay. Okay. Um, cool. And, and it's gonna make an embarrassing you reach sound the, like the threshold. Mm-hmm. Then then yeah. we'll let you leave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> are we are we roll in? It's we have to guess. We're guessing. Uh, yeah. I, I think we are. I think rolling. we are. So rolling. Kelsey, Kelsey, hi. Kelsey. Hi. Hi. Rock oh, you sexy bastard. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? I'm good. It's I'm been, good. It's been a sec. Uh, it's literally <laughs> been like a sec because we saw you last night, but that's cool. You did see me last uh, night. That yeah. was, and actually, you know what? I've been. Um, it's your fault, really. I've been a little feeling a little rough all day, and it's it's. I, blame I feel you. responsible. Yeah, I didn't know what I was responsible for, <laughs> yeah. but I felt responsible all day. Uh, yeah, good. no, you yeah. are because yeah. you put on such a good show, and we had such a good time. We didn't want to go home. Oh, yeah. thank you. We're talking yeah. about Jaws of Love. Jaws of Residency. Love. Yeah. Yeah, I just uh, wrapped up the October Silver Lake Lounge residency last night. Oh man! And uh, I dressed up as Two Face. Oh, that was you looked yeah. amazing. Thank you. Yeah. I, I went all out. I'm very proud. No, you should, you should be. be. Yeah. You should be. I mean, you even like were in character. That was fun. I, I appreciate um, <laughs> yeah, costumes yeah. that go with like a little bit of performance. Sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. man, that good, bad banter you had. Yeah, had me that was rolling. funny. Oh, good. It was. Oh, great. It was so, everything I needed. <laughs> how red is like everything you own now? <laughs> oh, right. Oh, my God. Well, certainly those that shirt and those clothes. But uh, I was good. I was good at not like getting it anywhere but i yeah. did really want to touch my face oh no yeah. and that's uh yeah. that's, that's difficult because you're gonna you know <laughs> well right because then there will be just be like little red fingerprints all over silver lake lounge <laughs> you can see where you like played the piano though like oh, yeah. you know oh, sure right. yeah. oh all i hit that key before yeah i got i got a tiny spot on our white uh, bathroom um, shower curtain. Oops. Oh, no. But I got the Tide pen out yes. and I got to it immediately. Yes. And, and I, I, I will give my wife something insane was, <laughs> if she can find where it was. I was going to say, you got out the Tide pen and you're still yeah. married. I was, I, I was <laughs> thinking like, I'll give, I'll, I could give my wife like money. Yeah, but like, can we, we have you, joint uh, checking accounts. Uh, <laughs> we need you to commit to like $1,000 if she could find it. Oh my God, $1,000. <laughs> I'll, bu- I'll buy her something amazing. That's funny. I appreciate that you were like, oh, got to get that Tide pen. Oh yeah. I mean, you're very domesticated. I am I am spilling on myself constantly. So oh, I, yeah. I know where the tide pens are. <laughs> I buy the tide pens. <laughs> you have you backup know? tide pens. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 I feel you. That's Big smart. Time. Yeah. Who knows what men carry in their pockets, right? Because like Tide pens. The po- well, maybe. I mean, lady lady pants, the pocket is literally two inches deep. Oh, I remember right. when I went to the But I men's pants. jeans, the pockets are like 45 minutes long, yeah. Yeah, they're like a <laughs> foot deep. It's crazy. I yeah, mean, you, count you know, cargo pants, we got pockets for days. <laughs> yeah, no, lots of seriously, pockets. it's uh, I mean, you could pull like a full rabbit out of there, it's like unbelievable. <laughs> Would you be into like larger pockets for ladies? <laughs> yeah, should we release rock lady, with pants? <laughs> lady cargo you know pants. Let's let's actually, um, yeah. let's do a collab with Jenko, okay. Uh, where we make. Hold on, um, I'm writing this down. Go ahead, go ahead, <laughs> yeah. Jenko, collab it's, with Jenko. It's like rockwardness, uh-huh. you know. You're writing X it with your Tide pen. Use a real pen. <laughs> Damn how, it. How much are Jenkos these days? Do they even exist? I don't I know. I don't even know. Did you have a pair? Yeah. Kelsey, yeah. this is an important question. I didn't. <laughs> oh. I didn't go that far. It was like w- just one. I like shopped at Hot Topic. Mm-hmm. I yeah. had a chain wallet. Yes. Oh, uh, wow. But I no had, Jankos. But no no Jankos. Oh. And you know, yeah, I feel like I only see Jankos with that chain coming out. Always. Oh, yeah. The really long chain. It was, it was long like chain requisite. Was a must. Some yeah. of them yeah. actually came with a chain. No yeah. wallet, just a chain. <laughs> as if you had a wallet. I got close. I got close, but not all the way. So you weren't yeah. into insane class. 
clown posse is what you're telling me. I was not into, I was not a, uh, <laughs> you're not a juggalo. Juggalo. <laughs> a ju- ju- juggalo? A juggalo. 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 Yeah. Has anyone ever done, I'm just a juggalo, like a version of that song? Like, no. Is no. that a song? Yeah, it's a, I just, I that was the clunker nobody. I offered the room right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm just a juggalo. Yeah. No? Well, mm-hmm. funny Everywhere story. Yeah. David Lee Roth, come back. I did have a friend in high school, a uh, two, Female friends, in fact, who were very into ICP. Uh, cool. Mm-hmm. To the point that they were like, you know, these 15 year old girls wearing these like Jinkos and like really baggy t shirts <laughs> and even like braiding their hair and stuff, white women. Yeah, cool. cool. Um, <laughs> but uh, I remember one night like hanging out with them and some people were on acid, not me, but the girls in question were. And I think I said, ICP sucks. I don't think you can. I don't think you can argue like the merit of ICP with a, a juggalo. No. Like it's obviously <laughs> something they understand on a level that yeah. you do not understand. Yes. Would you say like a a it's like magnets? It's yeah. like how do they work? <laughs> 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 Wait! Oh my God! What is the name of that song? It's like oh, it's a miracle. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Dude, that's incredible. Yeah, like they, I really yeah. like that. They broke the internet with that one. Right? Yeah, that's you pulled so that good. one out. That's that's yeah. a good one. <laughs> but enough about ICP. Let's talk about you. Yes. How? Why did you first start playing music? I mean, like in the like earliest memory. Yeah. So um, my dad played guitar and sang. And uh, so I grew up uh, with, uh, you all know my brother Spencer mm-hmm. and uh, my brother mm-hmm. Alex. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, no, <laughs> yeah. doesn't ring a bell. I have, <laughs> I have, and then a, a much younger sister, Sabrina, and then two much older sisters who, who we didn't live with because they're, they're older from different um, uh, partners. Um, but so the four of us would grow up, we grew up in San Clemente and my dad would play like these folk songs as we're waking up or going to sleep, like trying to put us to sleep or something, or That's just waking so awesome. us up nice. Yeah. It was a it was a nice like counterbalance to my mom screaming all the time. <laughs> just like screaming, you know, directives and things. Yeah, like yeah. He'd, he'd be like playing Peter, Paul, and Mary. And then, <laughs> and then my mom would be like, get into the car. <laughs> Cause she was Colombian. Is it like yeah. so close your <laughs> eyes, you can close your eyes. It's all right. Wait. So, so I, I mean one. he would he played he played something called Polly Vaughn. Oh. oh yeah, we got a we got a big old wow, that's motorcycle. Yeah, or, oh, it's a I helicopter. Think it's a helicopter, yeah, and it is low. It it's funny whenever people do this on podcasts where they're like, "Oh, that that noise," and then no one hears the noise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No one knows what's going on. Oh no, I wonder if you'll hear this. <laughs> no, no, we were recording in Spencer's we've, backyard, and so we got very used to like Snoopy planes flying above. We've us. actually oh, sure. we've yeah. actually found that the only thing that really matters is planes and helicopters oh man yeah. oh, everything else next to uh what bob hope no what is <laughs> yeah, well, yeah I know. bob hope that's yeah, actually we're right there. that's we're, the we're first one we've close. heard all day and oh, yeah. usually yeah. like tony can kind of magically take everything else out but airplanes just have a special special frequency yeah, yeah but yeah. i added it out at least two or three airplanes per episode last oh season. for sure uh, <laughs> it's so funny talking about airplanes because my dad was a pilot yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, for, american for american airlines yeah cool and uh anyway he 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 would like it was cute he bought this <laughs> martin backpacker martin oh, is a cool, really yeah. nice guitar oh, yeah. company yeah and it was called the martin backpacker and it's like this really skinny tiny travel guitar. it's got that like concave kind it, of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sort of like, it's basically um, the, the width of of the neck just all almost all the way down and then just kind of fans out a little oh, bit yeah, yeah like the camp yeah, guitar yeah. yeah and he wrote uh he wrote a poem about how he takes his Martin backpacker on these trips and plays them on his layovers in his hotel room. Aww. And he got the Martin, uh, he, he got it in the Martin newsletter. Whoa. <laughs> that's amazing. Oh, that's oh my so God. Awesome. Your dad is yeah. published. I love your dad. That's dude. crazy. Oh, that's so funny. He's hilarious. That's yeah. so cute. I saw that and I was like, I'm going to, be a professional musician. I'm gonna bury you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> up Screw you, Dad. I'm one one do up you so hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but he. That's so funny. he he loved playing. He would play like Peter Paul and Mary songs or like Beatles songs or he'd play. Uh, 
mini Ripperton that yeah, yeah. Oh. loving you yeah, yeah. That song? could he hit yeah. that uh, he could not no. No. <laughs> he, but he would just do a ah. version of it yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love that he Impressive. could not yeah. 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 He, no we all know I that mean, note yeah who, who well, from could South Park. do that no oh. not me <laughs> yeah. okay. remember that was like a, an early South Park episode the whole thing that nobody could hit like the high F or something oh, oh right oh, yeah. because that would set off that. like the bomb or something or yeah like, exactly yeah, when okay. the high, yeah it was like exploded the donkey yeah deep cut the, literally one of the first yeah. five South Park episodes. Oh, amazing. Yeah. That's beautiful, yeah. though. He'd play all those songs. Yeah, like, yeah, it was really nice. And and so he just got us all the bug to play music. So all, all of my siblings play or do something musical. Uh, and and uh, yeah, I just, I, I really became a early lover of like the Beatles and cause he was always playing that stuff. He had the, the, you know, like the, the two compilation albums, the red one and the blue one. Yeah. Oh, the, the anthologies. Apple. With yeah. The, apple the anthologies. On the cover? Yeah. 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 So, so we, we, we tore through that like, like, like all the, the 60, time. 60s yeah. and like, uh, the seventies, right? Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Basically like, you know, like you think early Beatles, like she loves you, like all that stuff. And then as soon as it started getting like kind of more psychedelic, that's like the blue album. Yeah. And I always liked the blue album more. So <laughs> I was a cool kid. Right. Yes. I was the coolest verified. kid. Was tomorrow right. blue album. Yes. Was tomorrow never knows on that. You know the one I'm talking about. I don't about even think bass? it like, was on yeah. um the compilation. Yeah, yeah. Because that's what's I mean, insane. that's the that's the that's, cool that's, 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 that's the, the cool, cool track. Yeah. Everyone's like oh. But dude, that's what's insane about the Beatles too, is that they can have this like multi volume mm-hmm. greatest hits album like with like that's categorized by decades. That doesn't have and they room. still have more hits that aren't on those <laughs> yeah. things. It's like, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I actually will occasionally still discover a Beatles song that is new to me and how is that possible? Like yeah, they, that's it's so insane. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I was really obsessed with them as a kid too. Like, oh yeah, they're kind of accessible for kids because some of their songs sound, you know, like Octopus's Garden or something sounds like totally. A kid song. Yeah, and Maxwell's Silver Hammer, yeah. and it's like hitting, you know, like that <laughs> little hammer yeah. on an anvil <laughs> for like one of the like yeah. that was like one of their musical choices, you know. Yeah, it's like about like a gun, like no, it's shooting about a murder. gun, right? It's literally so about murder. murder. Okay. Like <laughs> Maxwell is murdering people by hitting them in the head with his silver hammer. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I, I was yeah. obsessed with that album and actually that song weirdly which maybe that explains why I like true crime I don't explains know explains why you like to murder <laughs> why I like to murder yeah, yeah let's yeah. get into that uh, um, maybe we edit that yeah. out of the podcast we, yeah, yeah. we should incriminate <laughs> totally yourself if I can yeah. figure it out Are you, you're not recording this right no okay. no, oh, cool. no gotcha well, you can say this whatever is all you want. test run he's writing you. this all down with his Tide pen yeah with my Tide pen the last time you're saying so Beatles anthology yeah 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 so so he he got us all into music, and then I just fell in love with uh, the drums. That was my first oh, instrument yeah. that I really wanted to to learn. And so, in fifth grade, I got my parents got me a Sunlight yeah. drum kit. Oh, yeah. Do you remember oh, yeah. Sunlight? Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, it was like the most it's budget. It's like the Squire starter the pack of oh, drums. Yeah, yeah. 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 The Squire starter yeah. pack of drums. Yes. Man, I looked through like musicians' friend <laughs> so much <laughs> and, yeah. and like Guitar Center catalogs and stuff. Yeah. And, Love it. But I got the dr- I got these drums and we had them in our garage and I was just like off to the races and just and tried to jam like all of our us brothers tried to like play some covers here or there. I remember um, so cute, like Hanson. Yeah, family. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, the first, uh, the first like drum thing I learned, uh, like from a song, was um, in Bloom. Uh, oh from yeah, Nirvana, yeah, yeah, hell yeah. Uh, off of uh, Nevermind, because it, it was that. It was like such a catchy drum thing, drum lick from Dave Grohl. Yeah. Yeah. It was like do. Do 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 yeah, I don't think I even know. It was like a '60s like oh, it's TV, hilarious. TV Ed Sullivan performance yeah, or something. Yeah, it's like the, oh, the host yeah. is like Ed yeah. Sullivan. He's like, ladies and gentlemen, Nirvana. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh my god, yeah. I didn't yeah. have cable when I was a kid, so like, I, I missed on out on a lot yeah. of that. Yeah. Stuff. This, this dominated cable for yeah. many years. Yeah. <laughs> well, MTV. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> um, but yeah, so you would play drums in the garage with yeah. Alex and Spencer. That's yeah. really cute. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and then my mom made us, uh, take piano lessons because mm. she, she was just like, she wanted us to be better at math. And she read somewhere <laughs> that if you, if you take piano, it, it like <laughs> makes you better at math. 
so she's like, you have to, this is, this is such like perfect, like my mom thinking like how she makes all her decisions. That's funny. Uh, Plus your heart. Like what's, yeah. what's the return on investment here? Let's, you know, let's like, make sure that I, like, yeah. I do yeah. like math. I am not a mathematician yeah. and I did not like mm. do like higher level AP math classes, but I, uh, I'm a professional musician. And did, I, piano, I did piano help uh, with math? I don't know, but <laughs> because well, I never did um, like the lessons that the piano teacher would would want you to do, and oh. it was this battle every day because I had to practice for fifteen minutes. It's it sounds it's like an eternity such, like, when a, you don't want to. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it's like such an easy thing to like do, and yeah. my mom would start an oven timer for 15 <laughs> minutes and then and then I'd go to the piano and I didn't want to like play whatever was in the book and like learn anything so I would just dick around I'd mm-hmm. like mess around and like write my own little things and then my mom would be like I know you're not doing the lesson <laughs> I know you're not doing it right I'm like mom start the timer she's like no no not until you do it right mom sorry start the it sucks oh, oh. like five and then we'd fight for like an hour. Yeah. <laughs> oh and just like, oh, no. just the, yeah, the, yeah, all she wanted was the 15 minutes. Well, but yeah. I mean, okay. Though when you're a child, like how many things did you draw out unnecessarily uh, because it was just like something you didn't want to do? So totally. it's like, if oh, yeah. you like didn't want to eat your green beans or something, yeah. like you yeah. could have just eaten them done, but no, no, you're going to like yeah. chew them really slowly and like make faces and yeah. like, but it's like, yeah, 15 minutes is like an eternity for something you don't want to do. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And especially as a child, it's like forever. 15 yeah. minutes is forever. Yeah. That's Wait, like it's like, it's like as a child, you're a dog. <laughs> and then you go up and you become an adult and then you're like a human. Well, you're, <laughs> when, when is that, when is that, you know, switch over? I don't know. Uh, yeah. I mean, maybe this is why we treat guys dogs like children, but like, yeah, um, yeah. yeah right. Because you're just your like concept of time. Right. Yeah. Like as a child, like anything you don't want to do could I mean, even if it's like two minutes, it's yeah. forever. Oh, so, yeah. But so wait. So like when you're playing and during those 15 minutes, when you're like kind of playing your own songs, was that the first time you're like writing music for yourself? Um, I guess. Nice. Yeah. And then my dad uh, kind of taught me how to do like a bar chord on a guitar. So I just kind of like started teaching myself guitar. Cool. And so I'm like slightly self-taught in all these things. Um, and, and, and I just, yeah, started like making up my own things. And I I knew like all my other friends were learning, like covering their favorite songs and stuff. Uh, but I just always wanted to just write my own things. Nice. And, uh, yeah. So like, I think, well, the first band I was ever in, uh, was called Syndicate. <laughs> cool. We were these really hard eighth graders yeah, at, yeah. Our, at our Catholic school, um, and and no one had the guts to sing yet. So it was yeah, an instrumental, yep. and oh, it was like it. Um, this dude on guitar, another dude on bass, and me on drums. And so we like played. I think our a school like talent show. Uh, was it the Sunlight you were playing then? I think so. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Eventually, I got Tama. Some Tama rock stars. Yeah. Nice. Were that is that what that was? Yeah, the were Tama called? rock star. Yeah, Tama rock stars. Yeah. yeah. Oh man, that was a it was a good day. <laughs> it was a good day when uh, oh, so when Santa were, brought that to it. me. Wait, <laughs> so you were the drummer of that band? I was yeah, the drummer oh, yeah. of that band. Oh, yeah, that's fun. And mm. then in high school, I played drums in a hardcore band. Nice. What was that called band? Through called? the Heart. Yes. Oh, I don't think I and, ever knew that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So Through it was heart. like all sophomore year of high school, I was playing with. Um, it was like it was me, a bass player, two two guitarists, and then a singer, a screamer, screamer <laughs> singer, hardcore band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and at, he he's like one of my best friends. His name's John Porus. He he like we went to college together. He was my roommate, and then he ended up being like a really rad um, like drone uh, artist. Oh, cool! Um, oh, nice. um, Shout out, John. Yeah, yeah. It, he has a project called Barn Owl. He had one. Now he's releasing all his own stuff under his own name, John Porus. Nice. But um, yeah, I played in this band, and we and and everyone was like straight edge, and I was like, <laughs> I was That's like, so out, of, out of like necessity because underage. No, the scene, like, the scene was just like about yeah. being straight edge. Oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. Was in high school with yeah. the X. 
Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. They all had X's on their yeah, hands. Yeah. And and we played uh, Hoagie Bar Michaels. Hoagie Do you know Bar- that? Right by the airport. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right Hoagie, by- uh, I'm sorry. Hoagie Bar Michaels. It's called Hoagie Bar Michaels. <laughs> yep. And it was like a sushi spot that had a stage and it was by John, John Wayne. Wayne Airport. Yep. Wait, wow. I'm sorry. It was called Hoagie Bar Bar Michaels. Hoagie and Bar Michaels. Sushi and they spot. and they yeah. did all ages shows, and they did did all they, ages which shows. was huge for did us they in Orange have County. Hoagies? They did, yeah. I don't uh, even. I don't, think, I don't even remember. No, it was all about the music. Yeah, it was okay. all about the rock. Okay. Excuse me. It was me. not about the hoagies. They were hoagie list for sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a name. Uh, <laughs> don't look into it. But I, everyone would have axes on their hands, and yeah. I, I was like, I was in the band because I was the best drummer in the high school. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and 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 was that was into music and f- kind of friends with them, but I wasn't super into hardcore music. I was more of a new metal kid, but I kind of I I kind of got into some of it. Like, what were you listening um, to? Well, like, uh, so early high school, it was like, well, my first favorite band in the world was Three Eleven. Oh, yeah. It was like the first, like my own, like oh, I'm a huge fan of this band. My my our like babysitter left. Um, a, a like tour doc that they made <laughs> oh, and wow. like we're watching this thing so and they're on cool. they're playing live and they're smoking weed and they're on this like <laughs> tour bus and they're doing like these like milk challenges with their fans where they like you have to drink a gallon of milk oh. and if you can do it without throwing up you get something or some, wow. dumb, some yeah. dumb thing and uh, it just looked like the most fun awesome thing in, on the planet uh, so, uh, yeah, I was in love with 311, but then I went, I, then, so like, I got, I started getting into like harder stuff, like Slipknot and yeah. Limp yeah. Biscuit and yeah. Corn. That's yep. like, that was like my, oh, yeah. that was Same. the area yeah. that I, that I loved. Didn't quite go over to ICP. Like I was close, right? <laughs> you were, yeah. Yeah. You were adjacent. ICP adjacent. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Juggalo adjacent. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But then started getting into like hardcore a little bit, like. Uh, through hardcore, I started listening to Glassjaw, oh, yeah. and and I was like a huge fan of like the post hardcore things, like Me Without You or Thursday, or and then you got into like Coheed and Cambria and like kind of that world, like emo world almost, e- yeah, yeah, emo yeah. post hardcore world, um, and then and then from there, like by the end of high school, I kind of like drifted into like. Animal Collective, Sufjan Stevens, yeah. Arcade Fire World, yeah. uh, and 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 you know, then from there, just kind of kept kept going down that lane. It's so cool. Like, so it's speaking of Nirvana, uh, like you're playing drums in all these bands. Did you have like a Dave Grohl thing where you're like writing songs yet, and you yeah, wanted to like? Yeah. You know? So like, I I was I was starting to write songs, and and then I I I pitched a few to through the heart towards the end of like our existence. Yeah. Um, but like we didn't like survive long enough to oh. like get there, <laughs> so that kind of ended, and then um, Taylor uh, Rice and Ryan Hahn in Local Natives, they were going to a neighboring high school, and I'd become friends with them. Yeah, and because like when you're in Orange County and you're into music and you just like meet everyone else yeah. who is, and it's like kind of a small club. We talk that, about that, yeah, 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 for sure. So then I was gonna kind of play drums with them but they they had a drummer already uh so like they're like just play guitar with us so i started playing guitar with them and that's when i started playing with because with oh, them interesting wow. and was that cavill at rest cavill at rest, cavill at rest. yeah that's okay. what we were what, what they were called and, and then i joined with them like 2004 okay we were like this like high school emo band then we're just trying to figure our our shit out uh and then by the time we got to like 2008 we had written half of uh our first album gorilla manor and we were like oh this feels like way something that's different than what we did before and we should just like be a new thing wow so glad we did that (laughs) yeah wait so like was it a thing did the songs change because of a collaboration and songwriting uh it, it just it just it's just like people growing up and ev- yeah. evolving in different musical tastes and figuring out how to like express yourself or express like uh, what you want to bring to the table, like what you want to see happen. Cause, cause I, I mean, when you're just starting out, you want to em- emulate your favorite bands and, and the, and you want to mm-hmm. create yep. these sounds and this, this, these songs that, that give you the same feeling you get from when you listen to your favorite yeah. songs, but you just don't know how to do that yet. Right. Right. You know, so you write stuff 
that's like dog shit. Yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. And, and, yeah. and you're just like, oh, that's or not. Or you write stuff. That's, and then you just like keep going, you know, and then, yeah. and then, and then at, at a certain point you either quit or you like, are like, oh, this actually is feeling like, oh, this is, could be like one of these other people's or, songs or, or something. Or this is maybe yeah. like my authentic voice and not just me trying to sound like Coldplay or exactly. whatever. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like so, you're find, finding your finding yourself, yeah. you know? What were you guys listening to when you started writing the songs that ended up being Gorilla Manor? Um it was it was like like people like Animal Collective and mm. and Arcade Fire and then there was these like these these kind of raucous Midwest bands like Annuals huh. or uh, Akron Family. Do you remember? Yeah. Any of these oh, guys? Akron yeah. Family, I remember. Yeah, there, there was a there was an album called Be He Me from Annuals, oh, yeah. and I think they did a couple more. But the guy singing would play a tom next to his keyboard. Yeah, and I saw oh, that hmm. shit right. that blew my mind. Where have and I, I seen that before? You know, right. <laughs> well, well, I was well, I played drums. Like I'm, 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 yeah. I'm still like a good drummer, and and so I was like, how oh, I should do that. So, yeah, yeah. so. I put a tom next to my keyboard, and 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 then, I and then that helped inform like so many of of the rhythms and beats and stuff on Gorilla Manor was having the two, um, Matt playing drums and then me doing auxiliary percussion or you know the tom. Mm-hmm. We just uh, just got to a point I think, and and it's interesting we got there together. Yeah. Um, and found like we were all growing in the, kind of the same direction and. That's awesome. I don't know. You know, it's like a lot of it's like a lot of hard work and then a lot of luck and a lot of timing. And it's just like we just got really lucky. Yeah. That's a perfect segue to backtrack. Like, so you're playing an electric guitar, I'm guessing, with an emo band. We're going back to like when you were first yeah, writing songs right. because you said you have a bunch of bits of songs and stuff. Oh, like sure. first, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we got because prior to uh, what became local natives like you were you had already begun writing your own songs and stuff uh-huh. so what you got <laughs> oh uh, so well i can tell i can tell stories about the songs i can't play them themselves um maybe like my brain like won't allow me to do it <laughs> um, but i i honestly like can't remember how to play them and but they but they were both on guitar. The 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 first song that ever made the cut for a Cavill at Rest was like we had made like two EPs already, and and then finally on the third one I got a song called Title Killer yeah. mm. that was like an acoustic like Rocky Raccoon vibe <laughs> like yeah. s- song about the end of the world and like and like the ice caps melting and and <laughs> and basically like the world turning into water world or something. So you're into um, light subjects, okay. Yeah. Sure. yeah. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why that was like the first one to 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 make it through. I had one I I had the the first one I ever pitched was like about like a princess <laughs> trying to get like saved. It was called Princess Something and I I can't remember what it was and and so it was a situation where where we worked on it for a little while and everyone's like eh, i don't yeah, think so yeah. this, yeah. This these were not. like emo songs like the- kind of like they were more rocking like i don't know I, I was such i was such like a weird like mix of all these different influences that like well i'll say like em- it was like an emo band but it was really kind of like a post rock like i don't know it was like such a I feel like probably an awkward uh, uh, mix of different influences that led to like just stuff that some of it was some, I don't, I don't mean to talk like crazy horrible (laughs) shit on this thing and Taylor and Ryan, if you're listening, I'm very sorry. (laughs) Um, But it it was just like, it just wasn't like a a working singular vision or Mm. a thing that like felt uh it didn't. It, it it was like so many things that didn't feel like anything. Yeah. You know? yeah. Well, right, because you guys were all learning. Right. Yeah. Together. Yeah. So it Absolutely. was. Um, well, our little catchphrase for the show is everyone starts somewhere, and you know, you almost no one starts being amazing. No. Like, right. Some people do, and right. fuck yeah. them. But totally. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember any little pieces of those songs? Well, like yeah. So, Okay. <laughs> riffs. Yeah, give I us mean, some riffs. Truly, it, even if you just remember some lyrics, like whatever you can come oh, up with. Oh yeah, like the title killer song uh had like a line about these the 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 survivors who are on the ship 
Whoa. and how the ship was filled with assorted pastries and fruits. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the but the line but the melody was like assorted pastries <laughs> and fruits. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh my god, are you kidding me? I That's the it. one that broke yeah. through. That's that it. was the yeah. one that nice. was on the song that made it. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Yes. Which uh, I think they're really nice guys and probably tried to throw me a bone, you know, uh-huh. like yeah. he's like trying hard. Or and a pastry get, and fruit. You know? let, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Pastry and fruit. Maybe yeah. he's trying to throw you yeah. a pastry. Good Lord. Yeah. So, so we, and we always like sing that to each other and laugh like our asses <laughs> that's off. That's hilarious. Because that's so, so ridiculous. I, I had, I had some wild ideas for, I was just, I've always been like a very like creative person create, and I'm just always like, I, I don't know. I, I have trouble keeping things simple and that has been, I think that's been a huge part of, of my journey learning how to, how to distill things and how to, how to make things simpler and how to make things more concise and more clear, which Taylor and Ryan have always been really good at. And I've always been like this wild, like kite, like (laughs) going crazy. Let's try Um, this guys. Yeah, (laughs) That's what I love about you. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. For better, for worse. (laughs) This is, uh, this is me. Um, but yeah, that was just so ridiculous. Okay. So this is, this is an actual guitar riff that I seriously pitched for a song uh, uh. early on for a cavil at rest. Okay, can you hear it? Can you hear this at all? Oh yeah. All right. So <laughs> so this is the rip. I mean, that's pretty bad. Like it on electric, right? Yeah. And it's like distorted yeah, that, yeah, and shit. It's yeah, like yeah. Dang, dang, dang. it's yeah. got an emo feel to it. It's yeah, kind of like what the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, with the right beat behind it, that uh, I totally uh, yeah. could. You I know. appreciate you trying to make any sense <laughs> out of what you just heard. <laughs> But the, the only real reaction you can have is like that is an insane person's idea yeah. of a guitar part. Good job. Fella. I mean and the Ramones, <laughs> man. I want to be sedated has a one note guitar solo. For sure. For sure. I mean, but that one is like good. <laughs> right, okay. That's like way fair, way good. Fair. fair. So what kind of, um, you know, what kind of venues was Cavill at Rest playing? I mean, there yeah. was a ho- Hoagie McGillicuddy or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Hoagie Bar Michaels. Oh, sorry. Um, Bar Michaels. And I mean, we were just, we were doing a lot of the pay to play stuff, yeah. like Guy and Greco Presents yeah. or some shit. And we did this one show at the Whiskey A Go Go yeah. and we brought all these people and then they tried to fuck us on payment. And really? we were like, we brought all these people who oh, are trying yeah. to screw us. It's like, Guy and Greco, you <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> He's <laughs> like, bands don't usually do that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay, so, but you guys, you we guys, thought you'd fail. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, you, yeah. your high school band went up to LA and played the whiskey and brought people. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's I mean, awesome. That's, that's amazing. We, we, would, dude. we would play the Sing Sing. Yep. Uh, I think we sold out Sing Sing and Spectrum. Yep, Irvine. That's Irvine a Hollister Spectrum. now. We were just talking about that. Oh, it is? Oh, yeah. yeah, or like a... It's a Hollister. Oh, it, it, that's American at the Eagle Spectrum. Or... I'm going to go yeah. back there and, and be like, oh, you guys know this used to be a, a music venue? <laughs> yeah. It used to be the Sing Sing. Oh, we sold this out. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like trying to get on other people's shows and just yeah. like hustling. But mm-hmm. But like all of us were also in college at the time. So we were just like... Every every few months we'd play LA or Orange County, played like somewhere in Fullerton, or and we're just like meeting other bands and yeah. trying to do stuff. We were doing stuff with the, like the Union Line and book, and we did like a little West Coast thing up the coast yeah. for. Oh you yeah, guys. okay. That so, was that so, when we were local natives or Capital so uh, you guys had just become local natives. Mm. Yeah. So because we well, played at like Evocal with you as, as Cavill at Rest <laughs> right. and a couple other small. Right. I think you were even Cavill at yeah. Rest for the Safari Yeah. Well, why the show. name change? Like other than wanting to like distance yourself like well, songs uh, different. I don't think we were at the time uh, embarrassed of Cavill at Rest or anything. At, but, but at the time it was like it was like oh this feels like a new mm. like awesome yeah. thing that feels yeah. so different than our other material and someone had the idea to be like, why don't we just like be a new band? And yeah. Change our maybe name. it's like, this is our true identity yeah. or something, yeah. but I have a really important question for you. Uh-oh. Shoot. Here we go. What was it like touring with Tony? 
Oh, it was so much fun. We had so much fun. He's such a fun guy. <laughs> like I'm serious. And and like there was this one tour that it was like Union Line and then Vauxhall Broadcast and Local Natives. Yep. And we we piled into two vans. We shared all of our gear. And basically, Tony, the, did you book so, the whole thing? So that's uh, when we met. Basically, the the Cavalier Rester. Yeah. Uh, through MySpace, I hit up Ryan Hahn right. and we started talking and he right. we were just like, hey man, I think you're cool. And he's like, oh, we think you're cool. And then we just, <laughs> like, we should book a tour and then we didn't know how to do that. Yeah. But Indie on the Go, I think it was called. Oh, yeah. Oh, was, a, was a website yeah. that just started oh. back then in like 2008, I think still it started. Exists. Okay. It still exists, but it's not as cool. It yeah. used to be where you just like not go on there indie. and a, a picture of America came up and then you're like, <laughs> uh, you click on New York and then like you click on a specific place you want to go and it had every venue with the contact info, phone numbers, whether they preferred a face or a MySpace uh, or an email or a uh, call, it was amazing. So me and Ryan booked this whole nationwide tour. We went all the oh, way you over. You and Ryan did it together? Yeah, I would say. Oh, he, I didn't know he, that. He booked probably wow. like forty percent of the shows, and oh, I booked what? the other sixty. Yeah. He's not like that's blowing my mind. <laughs> Ryan Hart He's is not a like badass. the logistical. Dude. Oh no, he he. Well, that's wow. what Tony's. For. He nailed it. Holy shit. Oh my god! But yeah, that was so fun, and we just took turns because no one was anybody at that time, so we just took turns headlining. Yeah, so just switched oh, switched off every night. Every we, night, we, yeah. we played yeah from from L A to New York and back, and yep. and it would just be like there'd be like usually like no one there, yeah. <laughs> and so like the other bands would just like watch uh you know whoever band was playing, and they gave us drink tickets, yes, and we begged anyone who would let us to so that we could like sleep on their floor. Like, no um, joke, at the end of the show, we'd be like, hey, there's uh, 15 of us and we're yeah. for a place to go. And I'm not kidding. 99% of the time, someone was like, yeah, let's let's go. <laughs> let's yeah, go cool. Yeah. They had, like, on our floor, huge houses. Like, come, no. all 15 would sleep all, in one place. Like, all pretty sorts much. of different situations. Yeah, like, some, sometimes, like, really, like, this guy was, like, all coked up and, like, got yeah. on his motorcycle. And he's like, follow me. <laughs> like, uh, okay. Yeah, right. And, uh, we, and go? We, go, we go to his apartment. And yeah. then, like, everyone was, like, kind of partying late. And that guy was, like, a pretty wild dude. And yeah. you guys are probably like, we have to get on the road at 8 a.m. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, our, our, our favorite story is in Philadelphia. And uh, it was the night before our big New York show. At pianos, yeah, we that was like you know the big that was like the goal to get up there and to play and 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 that show ended up being awesome. Yeah, but the night before, the chef at the venue in Philadelphia was <laughs> like, "You guys can sleep at at, at my place, um, but I'm I but I'm I'm going to this bar and I'm just gonna like drink for a bit, so you just gotta wait for me." So <laughs> so we went to this bar and he's like drinking and we're like in like a bunch of nerds with our with our pillows and our uh, sleeping yeah. bags yeah, like uh, in in yeah. these like uh in like these booths like at the bar <laughs> and we're just like waiting for this guy to be done like yeah. to be done drinking or something <laughs> so like 2 a.m we go to his place and uh and he's like yeah you can sleep sleep wherever you want and he sat in a chair in the kitchen with like six tall boy pbrs and then put on a murder mystery on vinyl. Uh, what? And, and like watched and you listened s- to a murder mystery yeah. like what? all night. And drank a six pack. And drank a six pack. <laughs> oh and we're god. we're like, oh god, we gotta get up so fucking early. <laughs> oh, this is no. so this weird is and creepy. Yeah. Oh, no. And then it's like what, 6 30 a.m., 7 a.m. kids. The girlfriend comes home and she's like, what the fuck is all this? <laughs> Who are all these people? And the guy's like, babe, 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 babe. And like, yeah, it was, it oh. was, uh, we had to, we had to bounce like pretty, pretty quick. Uh, but, were you guys like early twenties? Oh. Like, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. So we were all like 22, kids, 2008. 2001. Oh yeah. 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 Babies. Yeah. So, but the next night you played at pianos in New York, and I think Tony told me that that's when you guys met your manager. That's when you guys met Phil, right? No, or am I mistaken? No, you're mistaken. Oh. You're mistaken. You're always mistaken. I'm always mistaken. You're How such dare a mistaken. You, Tony? I'm mistaken. Um, so it's so funny. I I met my wife and Phil both on MySpace, both December <laughs> 2008. Oh. Um. Wow, Phil. Phil, our manager, gets like we got this like uh, e- this message 
uh, and he had no profile picture, so it was just like the egg, you know. Uh, mm-hmm. And yeah, you're not, you're sketchy. not like, yeah, yeah. You're, yeah, like you're not, you're not egg. like super trusting of the of the faceless egg. Mm-hmm. He's no, not no, even no, friends no. with Tom. You're like, who is this guy? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> but he, but he is, uh, he's fr- he is friends with Tom. It's another Tom. Uh, York. This guy, Tom yeah, yeah. York, I hear. Tom York. Yeah. Oh. So, so, f- so he, he. Oh my god. He um, hits us up on MySpace. He's like, I heard you guys on Indie 1031 uh, and, and K-Rock Locals only because we got played on both Locals shows yeah. that Sunday, Cat which was Corbin. awesome, awesome, awesome. Yeah. R.I.P. Indie 103. I know. I know. And I know. actually K-Rock. And K-Rock too. They, yeah. they, don't, uh, they still exist, but they've K-Rock changed. K-Rock Locals only is not happening. Yeah. They've changed formats. They're not even K-Rock anymore. It's K-R-O-Q because they are no longer a rock station. Oh, what? What are they? More like um, it's all that tune. More dun, 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 no no it's like more oh, like Jack funny. FM or whatever oh, where it's just sort of open it's format everything. playing oh, what yeah. they want. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um. Well, so so Phil hits us up. He's like, hey, I love what I heard. Uh, I would love to hear more uh, about what you guys have going on, Phil. You know. And hmm. then it said TBD Records, and we're like, what the fuck? Who is yeah, this yeah. guy, Phil? What's TBD Records? And we look up TBD Records, and TBD Records is the record label that he started to put out in Rainbows from Radiohead. Yeah. Uh, because he's like super tight, super tight with them, and 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 so I I see this and I'm like, he's for real, he's for real, <laughs> he knows really how fuck. And so so we so we hit him back and and uh, we met up with him at a restaurant in Silver Lake, where do you remember there was like a place that had like dance nights and it was off Fletcher and Glendale. Uh, so this place called it was called Rodolfo's. Yeah, remember this place? My, my buddy, my buddy's yeah. family owns it. Yeah, and yeah. Then, oh, but then it turned into home. Now it's home. So yeah. we had dinner, and then there was like a rehearsal space down the street, and we went into a rehearsal space and just like played for him. Oh wow! And uh, <laughs> slight, slightly awkward. Like we were yeah. like, I don't know. Like, is this? Is this a thing you do? But mm-hmm. he's just like, I want to hear you play. And we're like, well, he knows Radiohead, so we got to do whatever the <laughs> yeah. fuck he wants to do. Whatever this guy <laughs> wants. Whatever he yeah. wants, we're going to do it. So <laughs> Whatever this very tall, thin man yeah. wants. Yeah. 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 So, so that's so that's when we met the first time, and okay. then and then we saw him. He was in New York when we played, okay, and, and that was like super fun to see him. And then it wasn't until after South By that um, we like locked it down with him. And, okay. and now we've been with him for... Uh, uh, 14 years uh, for for Radiohead like I, it, when they did Hail to the Thief they opened up with the They're There song mm-hmm. which has like the whole band's basically like playing like different toms and yeah. stuff yeah I love that live I was wondering, version yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah same so awesome. It's like funny. I wonder if like Phil kind of like saw some of that in you guys you know like, yeah I don't, you know, know. I don't know maybe well I mean he's he's been seeing bands for like so so long and yeah that's know. awesome I think he just knows what hits Yep. You got I, to play with Tom York, right? Yeah. Wait, so awesome. really? Oh, I, I jammed at a party with him once. Oh, that's neat. Which was yeah. like... You're like, no big deal. Were you playing, yeah. pia- were you playing piano? Or yeah, I played piano yeah. and he was playing bass. There was like somebody on oh, drums. Oh, man. Was like, Here We Go Magic had just finished a record with Nigel Godrich. Yeah. yeah. And he had a party. And uh, and then and we got to be friends with the Here We Go Magic dudes, the, 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 all, all those people. They're awesome. And, they're so awesome. Yeah. And uh and then it ended up being like a jam like later that night at um this place where Jonathan Wilson was recording in oh Echo Park. That's so wow. sweet. And man. uh and and I was DD. <laughs> so I was like super glad cuz I sh- I ended up in a situation that's just like out of my dreams. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and and I'm so glad I had my my faculties. Wow. <laughs> yeah, really. I mean, yeah. that's who doesn't revere Tom York? I yeah. Mean, really. I don't I mean like uh, yeah, I can't. So you're playing piano and he's playing bass and stuff. Yeah, That's other, fun. other people playing drums and, yeah. and and little little guitars and stuff. Maybe some oh. other keyboards. I don't know. Whatever it was like around. Yeah, it was yeah. a, a he wrote that studio. bass line for a national anthem and like I mean just like I that was the first time that I remember. Oh yeah, that I no, realized he plays like yeah bass and stuff. Oh and, yeah, 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 yeah. He does yeah. it all. So cool. What happened after South by? I mean, you played some good showcases and stuff, and then like that was were March people, of two thousand. Were people hitting you up right? for record deals yeah. or yeah. like? No, what? well, we we started talking to some UK um, people, um, and we took a bunch of meetings when we were back out in New York, uh, opening for. Excuse me. This Topo Chico is making me very burpy. <laughs> yeah, they do that. Yeah. Shout it's, out, it's good for you. Shout out. Yeah, it's okay. good for your digestion. Oh, great. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Yeah, we 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 started like talking to some record labels in the UK, and uh, and then we got like a like a publishing deal with Universal for the first oh, record, cool. and we were making no money for so long. And then once we got like part of that publishing, I remember being in Oregon. We were in Portland or something. And I would always like buy like a Chipotle burrito or like a, a Subway five dollar foot long or something, mm-hmm. and I'd split it, you know, for lunch mm-hmm. and for dinner. Yeah, it's just like a a surf or <laughs> like a like a like a peasant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I got and then I and then I got like a, a a little chunk of of money in my bank account, and I was just like, oh, I was standing. I remember standing in a parking lot like. Oh, I can burritos. eat six inches and, of sub at a time. And I got, I got no right, but then I got a burrito and I ate the whole thing. Whoa. <laughs> and it tasted uh, so good. I love good. that. Wow. Dude. I love that. It probably Man. tasted so it good. It tasted yeah. so yeah. good. Publishing burrito is the oh best thing. Oh my god. Sure. So okay, so that was you got a publishing deal off of Gorilla Manor. Uh yes. So well, so what it the kind of the order is we got this publishing deal and then we signed with a UK label. Uh, called Infectious, and then uh, this, and then we sent a French Kiss uh, for for like North America, and then the album came out like February t- twenty ten. When did you start writing songs that would become Jaws of Love? Yeah, so it was like we were working on our third album, Sunlit Youth, mm-hmm. and uh, and I think after Hummingbird, it was like a heavier record. That's our second record, a lot about like the passing away of my mom. And uh, on Sunlit Youth, it felt like everyone kind of wanted to take a, a, a shift into kind of a bit more brighter, energetic territory. Um, so that seemed to be the vibe. So I was trying to write songs um, more, more in, that, in that vein, which it turns out I'm not like super great at. Uh, <laughs> uh, and, 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 I, and I was, I, so I was writing a bunch of songs. I was like, ah, I don't know about these. And then... But then, like, I wrote some other songs that were kind of more, I don't know, down tempo and 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 slower, that didn't make sense for the record. So I, I after some of the youth, I had like a like a bunch of songs that that were, you know, like local natives rejects. Mm-hmm. And then I also had a bunch of other songs that, like, I always knew were never going to make sense for local natives, but I didn't know what it would be for. And uh, I remember talking to. I was talking to Richard Reed Perry from Arcade Fire because we they they took us out um, like a, a yeah. few times and we've broed down with them mm-hmm. like because we know them and the National and they're all like buddies. But Richard Reed Perry was uh, we were talking about recording, and uh, and uh, I was like, how do you how do you do like solo material? And, and he's like, just find a, a a studio you like where somebody's recorded something and just go there and record. <laughs> <laughs> and he just like said it so simply. And you're like, like, oh, that makes sense. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I should probably, I should probably do that. Yeah. So we had done all this stuff at this studio called Electrovox um, in Larchmont, which isn't there anymore. Uh, it was a pandemic death uh, of the studio, COVID. which is so sad. But um, we did local native stuff there with this amazing engineer um, named Michael Harris. Um, and I went back to the studio, booked some time with Michael, spent three days in there, and we recorded like half of this record. And it, I, I, my brain was blown, and I was like, oh, my God, wait, this is yeah. happening. Yeah. Mm. This is how you do this? Okay, yeah. okay, great. So so then I booked, th- I booked three more days with him, um, recorded a bunch more, did some recording on my own, uh, and then... I think it was like eight days total in the studio, and then I spent like nine days mixing it with this guy named Kean Reardon, who's an amazing mixing engineer. Uh, and and like I I didn't have any time really, I didn't make any time for Jaws of Love. I was just doing it in tiny tiny little breaks, in between local natives' schedule. And local natives wasn't taking many breaks at all at this point. So I really just like eked out this record. Um, but like it really opened up this whole world of like oh wow I have this thing I can, I can put these songs that just don't make sense or don't work for local natives. I have like a place for them to, to, to work and to really thrive. And, uh, yeah, that was like a huge, huge breakthrough moment for me. Yeah. Finding basically jaws of love and that outlet. 
Um, because local natives is, is, is an amazing like miracle of a thing where it's like five people in a room, like get together and they, and they, they form something that's like so much bigger than themselves. And it's like not anything any one person can do on their own, which makes it so special because without, without any one of the people, it would be so, so, so different and so much less special. Um, but that's like, you're a part of like, uh, you know, everyone's like sharing their collective megaphone and and what comes out is a mix of five people, which makes it really hard to be, to really get like a singular unique vision, one person's unique vision across. So I, I just found that through Jaws of Love, like being able to do that felt so amazing. And that like, you know, one is not one is not better or worse than the other. They're just they're just different, you know. Yeah. You can't you can't do what Jaws of Love does. Like local natives can't do that, and Jaws of Love can't do what local natives does. Yeah. So, uh, um, but I, I was like, I, I'm super grateful that it's like a thing now. Yeah, I love the Jaws of Love stuff. Thank you. Everything Tony. you've put out so far, man, so <laughs> good. Really. I like the name a lot. Same um, here. Oh, thank you. I mean, because you know, Tahoe. Jaws of Love, Tahoe. Jaws of Life. I mean, you have a song that's Jaws of Love. Yeah, I wrote a song called Jaws of Love. And I think when I was thinking of uh, naming the project, um, because I'm trying to save my own uh, name for like all my comedy stuff. Yeah, (laughs) Human Soup, we got to talk about that. Yeah, Yeah. but I, so, so... I loved the f- just the the phrase jaws of love it just really resonated with me and I was like that's got to be it so mm. very confusingly I have a track called jaws of love and <laughs> I am jaws of love what's your favorite song from jaws of love uh that you might hmm. want to play right now <laughs> <laughs> well um I haven't been able to play it uh I haven't played it anywhere on guitar but it's a I, I wrote a song called uh, um, let me see, let me see. Let's see. It's called Rainbow Baby. My my wife and I uh, over the over the over quarantine were trying to um, become parents, and we had a lot of struggles. We suffered through two uh, pregnancy losses uh, that were pretty horrible. It was, yeah, a really dark time. And I, I just, uh, I write about what happens to me. And I was working on a uh, new Jaws of Love step at the time. So this song just kind of came out about the first loss that we that we had. Um, but like, not so sad of a story. We're, we're 27 weeks pregnant right now. <gasps> yeah. Congrats. Everything's looking great. That's so, great. so yeah, I mean, life is just, is just wild like that. And uh, I don't, I don't think I'll feel like, um, ready to celebrate until like, you know, this yeah. little, this little baby's in my yeah. hands, in hand. you know? Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but, but we're hopeful. So I don't know. Yeah. It's awesome. we'll, we'll see. But yeah. So, so this song is called rainbow baby. Six-week run Ten years divided but never apart Maybe a fire should finally come of the spark A year had passed us but nothing changed Some plants had died in the neighborhood heat wave It wasn't odd for her to be late But for some reason this didn't feel the same A little window inside a cross 
tell everyone Yeah, it was early, but we didn't care It's feeling heavy when you're lighter than their proteins and antioxidants Soaked in magnesium Try to relax Try not to say names But we won't go to that Chris mailed his book on What to expect they were on their first day, we were next Those first two weeks were just like a dream Pain in the future as if from memory It was a Tuesday Store was on strike Came back to see the plants Coming back to life I found a kneeling Showed me some blood Wasn't a lot But it must have been enough Doctor said it was chromosomal Tears in the drive through before we came home They never tell you she blame herself It's powerlessness I've never felt myself sounded amazing uh, yeah, really I good. can see why you guys <clears throat> have been putting a trigger warning on that song uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah the lyrics are beautiful thank yeah. you I'm 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 very proud of that song just like I don't know I feel like I was able to tell the story of what happened in a way that I was really like excited about and uh, yeah I mean a long way from <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> I mean, like, <laughs> quite, quite a ways. Yeah. Quite a ways from. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. Do you. Um, uh, it's, yeah, different. Uh, yeah. Have different, you. Um, different, equally good. Yeah. Have, you had, uh, have you had people reach out to you and say, like, you know, thank you for uh, oh, articulating this in a way yeah. Yeah. that I felt I couldn't talk about? Or Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's. I. I as soon as we kind of put the song out and kind of put out a little bit of words on what it's about and, and our story. Yeah. It just comments and, and support and like other people's stories have been flooding in and it was wild. I played the song, uh, on the second night of the residency at Silver Lake Lounge that Jaws of Love just did. And I talked about the song and I played it. And this woman pulled me aside after the show and was like, I've never heard anyone 
sing a song about this, about miscarriage, about pregnancy loss, like, and especially from like a male perspective. And, and she thanked me and, and, uh, it's, yeah, it's just a wild, like I, I, I've written about death before. I've, I've written a lot about my mom before and people have come up to tell, talk to me about their experience with like a loved one passing away or a parent passing away. Um, but, the, but then this is like on a whole other level of like, yeah, um, some, something, something as like devastating as, as like something passing away before it can even be anything. Yeah. Um, well, it's a, it's, um, it's like a grief. I think a lot of people don't feel they have a right to or something Yeah. or it's a, yeah. it's way, Cause it's not, it's not way it, less discussed for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's, 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 it's painful and it's, it's so, um, it's just like such a horrible feeling. Like I get, I get it that like, it's, it's something that doesn't get discussed, but, um, I'm, but it's, it's so, it's been so crazy working on this song and like, I'm working with these different, like, um, people helping me, uh, put out, like distribute the song or help me on PR or radio or something. And I talk about the song and like half the people I work with will like, like email me or like pull me aside and be like, we, we experience mm-hmm. like, mm. like we we have like we have a rainbow baby now who's like five and like killing yeah. it and doing doing great yeah. and uh or 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 like you know we lost like one or two like trying to trying to have kids and 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 it's just it's pretty shocking like how many people go through it and there's just like no space to talk about it which yeah. sucks like you have to it's so it's so hard and painful and and to suffer it in silence it's like even even harder to make things even harder that's that's wild you you know you write about some some pretty heavy topics mm-hmm. and then you do comedy you oh, yeah. what a segue yeah <laughs> well yeah um, i tr- i try i i don't you're know you're hilarious I, thank you tony i mean I, I once i once saw kelsey do a rap battle in a hockey mask oh my god that sounds fun <laughs> yeah you've been funny this whole time actually you're really oh, hilarious, you. hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. but did you get interested in comedy as just like a way to kind of like balance things out or just how did that come i mean about? i've always really loved not taking things too seriously and yeah. making people laugh and mm, all and like yeah. i i find so much of life funny in in even even like in extremely inappropriate situations it's just all funny to me it's all like very funny <laughs> just people being people and and i've always wanted to do it, it, it more m- with more intention and more and and some, something in more of a professional way but i've i've just never known how to do it and i've just been like doing music so nonstop but along the way just i don't know just making all my friends and family laugh and stuff <laughs> yeah uh, so, I mean, I got to over the, over quarantine, got to make a podcast mm-hmm. called the Kelsey R TV show yeah. on radio. Yeah. Yeah. And I got to like come up with like all these characters and, and, uh, and, and it's like joke songs and fake commercials and, and fakes and, and joke skits and stuff. And, uh, yeah, I, I got that out on Headgum, which is like a comedy podcast network. But, um, I found out really quickly uh, comedy fiction is like the most niche podcast <laughs> category, just like out there. And uh, uh, I think I think I did like okay in that in that field, but like man, it was hard to promote. I, don't, yeah. I would say a podcast, and it'd be like, well, yeah, like Mark Marin or something. I'm like, no, no, no it's nothing not, like that. <laughs> not at all. Oh, like cereal? No, no not at no, all. No, not like that. This American Life? No, 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 no not ever. at all. What's kind of like your your goal with doing the comedic stuff? Is it just like for fun, or are you kind of? I mean, do, do you want to keep doing the podcast? Is that like a, or was that just sort of? I don't really know. I'm just such a huge fan of comedy, and uh, and. I realize like I can't be in like two places at once or I, I, I mm-hmm. have like, you have yeah. finite amounts mm-hmm. of time yeah. mm-hmm. and like I, I, the, if, if I were to do anything else in, in comedy, like I don't know what that would look like or what that would be. This, the podcast was a really fun experiment and that I felt like 
oh, I can express, this is how I want to express myself. I've done, I've done a bunch of like failed open mic stand up, st- 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 like, that's like cool though. You go up and like up and, yeah. tell I, jokes. I actually and think stuff. it's gone. It's gone a like little bit better with each one, but like it's so hard, and you need uh, to be out there doing it like every night. Yeah. And mm-hmm. like, I I feel like I it would I would just get divorced. Like I, my <laughs> life would be over. <laughs> that happened. Like, I, I, was, I was I was, I was talking divorced. to I was talking to like a comedian friend. His name's Brooks Whelan, and he has yeah. oh, he hilarious. has a podcast called uh, Entry Level. Yeah, he talks about everyone's first jobs and stuff. And I was like drunk with him somewhere uh, at Waltz, and I was like, I want to do comedy. And he's like, You're gonna ruin your life. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you want your life to get worse? <laughs> and uh, I was like, it's, okay, it's a good point. Point. This is a good point. Um, <laughs> Does, but, would it, would it be specifically stand because that stand up is brutal. Like stand up is brutal. Stand up like, is literally the scariest thing I can imagine. It's it's one of those things that like you got to start early with that. I think like there's such a like. Well, sure. Or <laughs> you know or I mean? di- like, or dive in super super deep. I I found uh, so I started uh, co-hosting a music and comedy night uh, at Checker Hall. Yeah, mm-hmm. we 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 got to do four. It was so so fun. Uh, I I it was me and this comedian Mike Bridenstine, yeah, um, who is uh has got a new hour of comedy and that's coming out soon. Oh sweet! And I'm gonna play like a a song that I'll write about one of his skits on it, and that's gonna be like really fun. But but uh, we would do like two musical acts and four comedians, and then Mike would do something, and every uh, I would do like a like a bit, like a sketch or something that like I felt like really good about writing something ahead of time mm-hmm. to do uh, versus like just like going up to do stand up, um, and that was like really really fun and got got some laughs. That felt really good. Dude, and- the pizza pizza bit. Oh I, yeah, I, I still yeah. laugh about oh, that. Oh my gosh! <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I went to one of those nights, and one of my favorite podcast hosts, Lisa Traeger, was the first comedian. I was very excited Lisa Traeger. About that. Oh yeah, yeah. They had such good comedians there because yeah. this guy Mike Bridenstine knows he's been doing stand up for over twenty years or something. Sure. For a long, long time, and he knows like everybody, like wow. all these people. He got. I, uh yeah we we got so many Nina so Tar was there she's hilarious Nina yeah. Tar is really really uh, Johnny funny. Pemberton oh yeah oh. So, so funny, funny. <laughs> that guy rules Johnny she's Pemberton awesome. oh my gosh I did a TV show with him a few years ago oh, and then nice. we ended up like on a bill together because these guys I know that own a record store in Echo Park were like yeah you should like come play at this comedy show we're doing in our record store. So it was like, I'm the only musician. And then it was... Was that Stories? No, oh. uh, Six City Records, oh, which City. is a great record store, by the way. Oh, Those gotcha, guys are gotcha, great. gotcha. Yeah, cool. but, uh, but it was kind of Stories funny because I had just worked with Johnny maybe like, I don't know, six months before or something. And so like he shows up and he's like, what are you doing here? I'm like, what are you doing here? <laughs> uh, but he's amazing. very, very funny. He's hilarious. And actually, he was on Lisa's podcast one time. Uh, oh, uh, nice. Because nice. he was in an episode of SVU, and she uh, has Oh, this that's hilarious. Oh, yeah. I, she, I don't watch SVU, but I yeah. do listen to her SVU oh, podcast. Yeah. You should. Oh, wow. You should She's watch so it for funny. Ice-T Alone. Uh, it's His pretty good. His one-liners? <laughs> I want to hug that Honestly, guy. though, mm-hmm. I like I could listen to Lisa Trigger and Kara Clank uh, describe Episodes SVU of Law, episodes. For, yeah, Lauren, gotcha. Law and Order SVU forever. They're so funny. Is there more human soup coming? I don't know. I, I, it's like it's like I just got to get real with my life and real with <laughs> my, <laughs> my my like uh, I don't know my you goals. Be, and, uh, yeah. You may be about to have a little less spare time. Yeah. Uh, I, so yeah. I mean, I've already got local natives and jaws of love, and that is really hard. To, uh, not I, it's hard to like balance a little bit, and 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 then. This baby's coming in January. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I meant. And yeah, no, I know, I know. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't know. I we'll see. Yeah. I would love to do more comedy stuff, but like, well, I don't know. It, it Some something's got to take a back seat, and I just don't know what it would be. The baby, it's been, obviously. It's just it, it, right, right. Of course, of course. Duh. Yeah, I'm gonna be a great dad. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, would it be like? I mean, is it the live aspect of comedy that like interests you most, or is it? I don't know. I just like making, making people, people laugh. laugh. Yeah. Yeah. I just really you get enjoy that. Immediate. that. Yeah. yeah, that's and, so amazing. Uh, I always have a good time. Just, just chatting people up and and it's been really fun doing jaws of love where it's just me so mm-hmm. i get to do whatever i want yeah. <laughs> oh, man. like for local natives we're all a part of a group and like if i hijack the show 
usually usually like the other guys aren't too thrilled so i try to be like respectful and not go full maniac mode uh, <laughs> while you know we're like playing our shows so but for jaws of love i can i can yeah, be it's just you and i i last night it felt really nice full full maniac uh yeah oh, that was harvey really dent fun. two-face yeah. Yeah. Oh, you that looked was amazing. Great. yeah oh uh, thanks in yeah. character is two-face that was really i didn't fun. get a good picture of the costume which i'm so bummed tony's about. got it yeah um, i got i got a couple I, pictures I, I yeah some stuff i might yeah. be able to share really i love how full circle it is yeah because we started with the show sure yeah one final question is it's very important to me personally okay is Sharon Van Etten really super cool? Oh, yeah. <laughs> she super is super cool. She's the coolest. Oh, thank God. She's just like down to earth and and just like a great hang. And yeah, she she deserves tenfold all the stuff, all the good, good fortune she's getting. And yeah. Man, if you had said great. no, I would have been like, edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh right, you know uh, that'd be funny if I outed somebody as being like an asshole on, on a podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean we leave it in. I just oh, sure. I'm just too personally attached to her yeah. being a good person. So uh, yeah, um, Paul Rudd is a sadist. <laughs> you know that? Knew it. Uh, yeah. Have you met Paul Rudd? Yeah. What? Well, because Local Natives was on um, oh the Apple oh, show, that Apple oh, show, yeah. The oh, Shrink yeah. Next Door, yeah. Yeah. which was great Based by the way. That, podcast of the real oh, of the real right. story yeah, yeah so it's will ferrell and paul rudd so yeah, yeah. In, oh, that was a, in this such show a creepy story <laughs> yeah oh my god yeah. it's made me so uncomfortable yeah. i can't believe Just it's the like whole true. thing yeah it's so it's so like it's so abusive mm -hmm. like yeah. you see like stories of abuse in all sorts of other ways mm -hmm. but for a for a for a therapist, for a, for a psychologist to, to abuse their patients like that, like yeah. he did, <laughs> is like, it's that's a darkness. Evil. For yeah. years. That it, yeah. Like yeah. years. Uh, it's wow. insane. Yeah, I you know what? I think I read story. about that. I don't. I, I yeah, it was don't a podcast. Know if I, it was chills. Wondery. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I realized it was a true story. That's even yeah. worse. But, you know, actually, some of, um, you, because you guys released the songs from that, the like 80s. Yeah, covers, yeah. Right? We made an EP out of it. Yeah, they, yeah a few cool. of those have popped up in um, various little Spotify playlists. And it's funny because every time I'm like, who's this? Because it kind of like <laughs> doesn't really sound like you guys. Uh, or I guess. Sure, sure, sure. But I mean, because you're not yourselves, you're playing right. this. Right. Ladies cover band or whatever. I don't know, but I love it. It's like we I have two it. faces. Oh my Whoa, God. Full hey, circle. There we go. Your local and, circle. Your local and native. We got two faces, yeah. one for each side, two circles. <laughs> <laughs> well, this has been amazing. Yeah, yeah, thank, thank you, you so much. Kelsey, Kelsey the blue album. Yeah. All right. All right, let me let me play you guys out, okay? This yeah. is uh this is a little little cover of a uh, of a uh, of a nice EP song. Right. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. <laughs> love this track. How could they yeah. turn that down? I know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Oh, you're Thanks a golden god. Me. Of course. <laughs> so many good stories. I just kind of wish we got a little more dirt on Tony. But, you know, what are you going to do? And what a gorgeous acoustic version of Rainbow Baby. I absolutely love that. I don't think you can hear that song like that anywhere else. Except here on Rockwardness. No big deal. But Jaws of Love's new record, Second Life, comes out tomorrow. That's November 11th. Woo! Be sure to take a listen. Give them a follow on social media. All those links will be in the show notes. And give us a follow, too. And please subscribe, rate, and review if you love us, because we love you. Bye. Bye.